Numpa, is that possible? Sure, yeah. I, I do actually want to point out too that on our agenda it says 350 Main Street, but it's actually 350 Southwest Zobrist. Oh, darn it. Oh, okay. That, that works. Wait, did you say the staff report says that or the agenda? The agenda. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, just the agenda. That might have been my fault. I apologize if it was. That's okay. Okay, it looks like we got ah, there he is. Lupa here. Okay. Um, I will start out and just say a few things briefly and then can you turn up your sound a little bit, Matt? I can barely hear you. No, oh, I can get a little closer. Is that helpful? Yeah, I can hear you a little bit now. Okay. Also check and see if your mic's turned down too, like mine was earlier. Oh, let's see. Check audio settings. Um, it, it says it's okay, so I'll just uh, raise my voice a little bit. Is that helpful? <laughs> okay. If I'm too loud, then someone tell me to bring it down a little. Um, okay, so I know you've all had a long night, so um, we'll get going. Uh, this application is from Ant Farm Youth Services, uh, Executive Director Numpa, Two Foxes Singing, who has joined us. Um, the proposal is to do a full rehabilitation exterior and interior of the building. Um, so for your reference, I don't think that we have any aerial map on here in the uh, staff report, but this is the little brick building that is just north of the new Clackamas River Outfitters location on Zobrist. And that would be just south of the DHS uh, building on Zobrist. Uh, it's been vacant for quite a while. And so this is a great opportunity to see it occupied. Um, <clears throat> I guess what I would like to do is maybe just turn it over to Numpa first to talk about his organization, their vision for the building and, and anything else he'd like to add. And then we can get into maybe some of the nuts and bolts of my staff report. So if that's okay with you, Mr. Mayor, we'll ask um, Numpa to jump in here. So, uh, <laughs> Um, I, I don't mind. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Um, I do wonder, though, if I need to just declare ex parte in this matter. Um, I'm not directly affiliated with Moonpa or Ant Farm directly, but uh, as a landlord, Ant Farm has been providing rent assistance to some of my tenants, mm -hmm. and I want to disclose that uh, fully, and I don't know if I should declare ex parte, so I'm going to leave the decision up to Denise Carey or Sean Drinkwine or Mayor yeah. Drinkwine. So you can still vote on everything because you don't have any financial directly to you, but it is good to put that out there. So if anyone ever were to ask, but you can mm -hmm. still participate. Okay, thank you. You actually beat, you actually beat me to it. Um, uh, the, the nonprofit I run uh, works a lot with the ant farm, but um, we don't have any direct uh, connection to this project yet, so. Great. Uh, Numpa, you want to take it away? Tell us a little bit about Ant Farm. Tell us a little bit about the building, the vision, et cetera. Yeah. Um, well, for those of, the, of you that don't know me, my name is Numpa. Uh, my legal name is even more different and strange. It's Two Foxes Singing. Um, I have lived in Sandy for 25 years or so. Uh, about I guess it's been 11 years ago. Um, I'm a licensed occupational therapist. I've worked in mental health and addictions. And about 11 years ago, I decided to get out of the rat race of Portland. Um, I was living up the mountain, but I was driving in. And um, I kept seeing kids on the streets in Sandy. And I kept thinking, you know, I got to do something about it. And so I turned all that towards a building in Sandy that was very much like Zobrist. It was empty and um, it was recession. I quit my job and um, we didn't get funds at that point. We just worked super, super hard. And uh, we actually never even hired a contractor. We had kids and families and everybody else doing the work. 
Um, but we built a, um, a nonprofit organization that we'd had for 15 years, but we just volunteered out of it. And um, we now have 12 programs of which many are um, actively actually in Estacada. We've always had Estacada youth involved. Um, the cafe and bakery is what came of the building in, in Sandy and it's a very popular and it's a great community space. Uh, we have cultural arts center there. We have a tutoring center. Uh, we now have a big garden and we run the farmer's market. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on because it's just, uh, as an occupational therapist, I don't know what you know, but part of my mission of life in life is creating meaningful and purposeful uh, life activity for youth and families. So uh, yeah, we've just kind of been, been morphing, you might say. Um, we put about 100 kids, we employ about 100 kids every summer. So it's been pretty wild uh, doing that. Last summer, we only had about 40, we had 60 kids in an internship and only about 40 employed because of the pandemic. Um, we got it like, like for the longest time, we've been going back and forth from Estacada. And then we got a grant about two years ago with the school system. So we've been in the school. And, um, and then we've got the alcohol and drug prevention program now that Julie uh, Searing is running. Um, and we've also got a homeless a liaison now that works with Estacada Youth. So it's been really exciting to, to get more and more involved. Uh, we've got an office in the school. Um, and I don't know where it was. It was, you know, pre-fire. Um, I saw that building and I had started a conversation with Matt a while before just to say we really want, like, if we're going to do justice to the work we're doing, we need to be in Estacada. We don't need to be a Sandy-based program. And um, I saw that little building and I chased down the owner and I really had to chase him down. <laughs> and uh, we shook hands and made an agreement. And then the fires came, um, he lost everything. And so I supported him in trying to get like some of his personal affairs in order. Um, and then we were able to get our lease and everything signed. And so that's, that's the backdrop of Amfarm. I could tell you story after story. We're going to be putting in a garden this summer, which is really exciting, next to the First Assembly God Church. Uh, I've worked with Joel's organization, worked with Food Bank. Uh, we've, we're, just, we're just doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we come over once a week now and do Community Connect uh, with code enforcement and try to just help people that need help. Um, and I feel like that's the best thing for our youth is get them really involved and teach them how to be of service and, and support each other. Um, so the, the purpose and the function of Zobrist building, as we call it, is to do very similar to the cafe and bakery, create a community space, um, put in a couple computers in there. It's very small compared to what we have here in Sandy. Uh, I've, I've kind of like really looked at, I are a member of the chamber and I've been looking for a while at what businesses are there and are not there. Um, and we do coffee really well, but there's a coffee shop right around the corner, so I wouldn't step on that. Um, so we ended up um, coming up with this idea of putting in a tea shop and in the tea shop also then tying it to what we do here. And that is having some tutoring, having uh, some support staff there um, and just creating community space. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. Um, we did it once before and it was a pretty big project and it was pretty exciting. And, and I'm like, I'm super excited to actually come to Estacada. Um, and what Katie's saying, I guess the other thing I want to say is, like this last year of the pandemic, everybody else slowed down and like Zoom meetings, I'm super uncomfortable just so you know, like this Zoom meeting thing is so weird, uh, but, but it's, it's good. Um, and um, like we ended up getting a contract with Clackamas County to do rent assistance and with Oregon Health Authority to do wraparound for people in isolation quarantine or people that um, can't pay their rent because of economic problems. And what, what's been super cool is that we, uh, ended up um, doing about $2 million, which is double our budget of services for the county. And um, we now have, and it's kind of, I don't know if it's public or not, but we have uh, just been awarded $5.9 million for this year to do rent assistance. Um, and then we're also starting to help with vaccination clinics. So it's, at first I kind of wondered off mission, but not at all because we got so many youth and families involved in it. So I could talk forever, I will, will not, um, but I can answer questions or tell you kind of like, this is what we're about. I was super excited to be able to come down and help uh, Estacated Community Watch during the, the re-entry part, that was cool. Um, yeah, we're just about 
getting involved and in, and showing kids how to how to be involved really so there you go uh thank you so i guess um if anyone has a pressing question maybe now is the time but if it's not pressing then i'll kind of jump into the staff report does that sound okay uh, yes. yeah okay um so uh as far as the financial context for this grant um you remember that the agency made a grant of thirty thousand dollars towards the facade improvement at the subway plaza and so that leaves a balance of forty-five thousand in the large grant fund for this fiscal year that we're currently in um so Budget-wise, we can't meet the full request of Ant Farm, but we can still talk about making a, you know, an appreciable uh, uh, grant amount. Um, as far as goals of urban renewal go, those are what we look for in measuring sort of the merit of an application. I've listed those in the background section of the staff report. I won't spin through them, but I'll just say that as you see, it checks off many of those boxes. Um, uh, the applicants' materials are attached, and hopefully you've had a chance to review those. Um, Numpa just gave us a good overview of what they want to do with the building, so I'll kind of breeze through that as well. Um, getting into the logistics of how a potential grant might work, um, we do need to see a little bit more detail in terms of a site plan and building elevations before we can get to a letter of commitment. Um, we just need to get that through design review and um, that should be a condition of any grant award. Um, let's see here, the total project cost is just about $149,000 and so you can do the math, but that, you know, we're, we're looking at a potential grant of 45,000, about a almost, almost a third of the project costs. Um, and then finally, uh, under the um, discussion section, I do want to highlight um, something that will be included in the recommended conditions. Um, because Ant Farm is a, a, a legal nonprofit entity, um, they could apply for tax exemption on behalf of the building owner, and then property taxes would not be collected. But as you're aware, one of the main goals of urban renewal is to collect taxes, <laughs> more taxes. So um, Numpa and I have discussed this and they and the landlord uh, have committed to not applying for that tax exemption so that the tax increment on this downtown improvement will continue to come to the urban renewal agency. Um, but it, we take them at their word, of course, but we should include that in black and white as a condition of this uh, uh, potential grant as well as in a letter of commitment. Um, I always try and offer alternatives. Of course, you reserve the right to offer a smaller amount if that feels appropriate. Um, and you could grant nothing at all, but those would basically be the options and the financial impact, the budget impact would be commensurate with how much you did or didn't uh, grant. Um, other than that, uh, I guess under budget impact, I'll also highlight one other um, sort of tricky point. Uh, Numpa believes that they can be done by the end of this fiscal year, June 30th, but I think we all know how construction projects go. There are always hiccups and surprises inevitably, and so um, we would we would still make an award for whatever amount you decide, or I guess potentially none, but I'm assuming there might be an award. Um, but we're gonna include some budget in next year's fiscal year for this project. That doesn't mean that they would get any amount more than what you grant tonight. It just means that we need to have that built into next year's budget in case we need to use it. Because if they do any construction work past July 1st, then it would come out of that fiscal year's budget. 
So it's kind of just a technicality, but just something to be aware of. Yeah, Councillor Litke or Commissioner. <laughs> Hey, um, I got a question for you. Being out that that um, if we're going into the next fiscal year, is that would that give us the opportunity to possibly award the full amount since we're breaking into a new fiscal year? Um, yes, that's that that's that's a possibility. Okay. Um, the second question is, uh, while I agree with your exactly with what the urban renewal um, is meant to do is to bring in more taxes. Sometimes just getting in a, a business that can help improve the city itself can help bring in more, which is an overall improvement for bringing in more taxes. So, and I, I believe when there's a group coming in to help, you know, our youth and people that need it, putting it in black and white that they can't, you know, get those taxes abated for the benefit of themselves would be, um, would be, I think it would go the opposite way. What we should be doing is the city to support you know, our social social services section. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there and my thoughts on that. Yeah, um, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I, I, I would need to look back at the program guidelines. I know that at one point we had language written into the grant program that said that tax exempt properties were not eligible for the grants. And so I need to revisit and make sure that that's not in the guidelines. If it is in the guidelines, then that may put us in a trickier position. Um, second question on that, then I'm sorry. Uh, if it if it is in the guidelines, would that be a state guideline for the what we fall under, uh, like if we're using this program, or is that a city based guideline? Um, just a local guideline. So if needed, if need be, we could look at a variant if need be as well. I just want to know our full range of options because I'm new to this. So I, I don't believe we would be in violation of anyone's policies but our own if uh, if if we decided to allow the tax exemption to go through. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Well, I really like the idea with the carrying over into the new budget cycle to award the full amount because I actually think for what this brings to the table and what its direction is, it really falls into all my categories as to what this program was set up for. So I feel that this is a very strong program. It has great potential for our future of our youth in this area. So all in all, I think we should find a way to fully fund this, whatever that might be, whether we carry it into the new um, budget cycle of the urban renewal or whether we find funds somewhere else in our city budget. But this is one of those programs I can honestly say falls in that category. Uh, Jerry, you have something to say? Just, just a question. I just, uh, you know, just uh, legal ramifications and stuff. So Matt, um, if we do decide to grant the full 60, 63,000, I think 63,000 something, um, if construction does not go to July 1st, how does that affect us? Um, how does that affect us, you know, legally? Can we still do the additional $18,000 in the next, the next fiscal year? Or are, are we just stuck with what we do this year, what we have this year? Well, as, as long as we have um, money in the and I can't remember what the fund is called underneath urban renewal is it um, capital improvement Denise yeah so if we go over the amount in the total um, budget whatever it's it's not a line item but the category then we'd have to do a supplemental budget and Sadie I don't know did we budget everything or uh I, I don't know what that budget looks like. I don't really either, to be honest. Melanie normally looks at that. Um, I don't have it in front of me. That's fine, we can bring that back. I think the initial question here was, can we? And I think we can find a way. I'm confident that uh, we can find a way to make this work. Um, there's also, um, money left in the small grant program for this year. So theoretically, we could sort of borrow from Peter to pay Paul as well. 
how much is our total in the small brand at this point? Do you know? It's either 30 or 40,000 left in that fund for the rest of the year. Okay, well, that answers a lot of questions. So thank you, Matt, for that. Uh, Jerry, does that answer your question? Okay, I appreciate that question. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You've heard it. You've heard Matt's proposal. You know what we're up against. And you know where we'd like to go with this. Um, how do you all feel about that? Is this something you can support? I'm seeing a thumbs up. and now I'm seeing a thumbs up over there. Okay, good. Good. I think we're all on the same page. Justin, how do you feel? Yeah, 100% on this one. All right. Sorry, good. I got the, I got the daughter that. on my lap. <laughs> but yeah, no, this uh, is a no-brainer for me. Okay, great. So, uh, uh, Matt, what do you need at this point from us? Um, yeah, just a, a, a motion and a vote. Um, the only other thing I will add, and I don't, I don't add this to, to try and influence your decision making. I just add it for the record and for your information. It does seem like we have potential other large projects um, teeing up for large grant asks in this coming fiscal year, um, at, at least one, and that would be uh, the potential redevelopment of the Procops building. Um, so I, again, I don't know that that necessarily needs to influence your decision making here. I just want to add that we could be facing another six digit request um, in this next fiscal year, and we'll just need to look at that as well. Sure. Sure, we appreciate that. In the context of the grand scheme of things and our maximum indebtedness and all that fun stuff. All right, well, thank you for that. Keeping us in the loop and letting us know. All right, so I'm gonna ask for a, a vote here. I'm gonna ask for a motion uh, to accept the proposal with the, <coughs> sorry, with the add-on um, in our next fiscal budget if we need to go that route. I think that's the motion, is that right? A good question real quick mayor yeah go ahead um so uh i just i, I will i'm kind of curious um if we put the motion and everything else in there for that question i had about matt and the uh the, ta the tax thing what do we sit on that one and uh where you get back to us and what we need to make a change to that later also denise you bumped your camera down oh <laughs> i'm trying to look at something on the other big screen <laughs> So, so based, on the, the based on the conversation so far, what a potential motion might sound like is uh, that, that you move to uh, approve this as written in the staff recommendation with the removal of condition number four and with the contingency, <laughs> uh, if you did want to, fund in the amount of like the 63.6, the contingency that that would only be the amount funded if that is uh, allowable. I still move what he said. <laughs> okay. So we got that on the table. Is that good enough, Denise? Are we falling in? Yeah, so um, there we haven't given any money, Matt, for the small uh, category. Right. So we could do the full amount this year, but realizing you would be limiting, you'd be taking approximately 18,000 from the small category for the remainder of the year, which really isn't very long in this year. Yeah, we're almost there from what I understand. So, so. is the is the full amount requested or 50% of the project 63.5, Matt, is that? No, I think that number came from um, a form that is actually outdated. The okay. form says that the maximum that can be requested was 63.6. And unfortunately, that's a figure that needs to be updated. So what is that can, figure? Can we do 50%? Is that possible? Like I know the asked for 63.6, is that the max that we can improve for? Or can we do the full 50% of what his project is? I think it's like another 12. According to the program guidelines, you can fund up to 50% of the project costs. So I think that the motion, even though you've already did it, but could say you're going to fund up to 63,600 or 50% of the project. 
whichever is less, right, Matt? Should be what it says. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we still have this, if, if the construction pushes into next fiscal year, we'll still need to add some funding into that fund, but that's mainly for us to worry about administratively more than anything. Right, but if they do, they can approve 63.6 and I think we'll be fine in this year. Okay, great. Saying. And then Katie, you had something you wanna add? Um, I, I wanted to throw my support behind sticking it a little closer to 60. Um, it would be a dream to be able to fund 50% of this entire project, even if that meant going to 75K. Um, but like Matt said, I'm sure that there's a lot of projects that we're going to be looking at in the next year, especially as it relates to the businesses that have seen so much struggle in our city in the last okay. year because of the pandemic. And then of course the next two years that they're gonna lose out on the tourism dollars. Um, I feel like we're going to have to be creative in the next year or two um, to help support the businesses that are here and some of the for-profit businesses that are struggling to keep that profit. I do wanna see Ant Farm here and I wanna help them succeed. Um, I, just, I, I, I just don't want us as a city to overextend that to a point where we won't be able to then help out other people in the future. So if we keep it around the 63.6 because we know we can afford that in this yeah. year's fiscal budget, I love that idea. And I love, and I wanna throw my support 100% behind that idea. Um, but when we start digging into the next year's budget for reasons of actual monetary funds versus, you know, oh, well, for budget reasons and construction, it might work out where we have to, you know, budget it this way. That's yeah. a different reason than I just want to give them all the money. I'd love to give everybody all the money. Uh, yeah. We need to think really strategically with it, though, in the next year. And so I would throw my support behind the 63.6 number, but I probably won't go much above that. Okay, we got that on the floor. Who wants to put the motion on the floor? Well, I think there was a motion. Uh, we were just talking about. Yeah, that. my original okay. motion. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll so Joel's on. made a motion for that. Uh, do I have a second? I second. I second. Okay, I've got uh, Charity as a second. So I've got Joel first, Charity mm -hmm. second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Well, hold aye. on. What are the specifics of that one? So Is that the 63? 63, yeah. The one you okay. About? And is that also abating taxes? No, I don't know. No, because we, we don't know if we can do that yet. I, it, it yeah. was to remove the condition and then uh, with a contingency of if it can't be done to put them back, put it back in. Would that be, that's what I heard you say earlier, Matt, correct? Right. Yeah. So um, I, I think what I said was something to the effect of, you know, moving to make the approval of the grant request as written by staff in the staff report with the exceptions that condition number four would be removed if we could legally do so. And with the uh, increase of the grant amount to 63.6. Okay, great. So back at the hand raise vote for aye. Okay, I'm seeing everybody. Are you raising right now? Oh, Katie, I can't see your hand. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got everybody on board except for Katie. All right. So Katie, you're a no. I'm, a no. I'm a no only on the tax one. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to see that condition stay in there, but that's okay. Okay, great. So thank you, everyone. You did a great job. I think we got that out of the way. And then uh, board member comments. Do I have anybody that wishes to comment before we move on? Um, uh, I just, no, go ahead. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. I just want I to just say thank you. I just like to say thank you, and I'm super excited to be there with the youth of Estacada. So just thank you for that. Thank you. Well, thank Nimba, you. you beat me to it because I was literally just jumping on to thank you seriously for everything that you've done for the greater community um, inside Estacada and inside of Sandy. I've seen firsthand what you what your program has done for families um, of all different walks of life, and I just want to say I'm really looking forward to seeing your organization come into Estacada and be just as successful here. And I want to see uh, I want to see us be a support for you in that. And if you need anything from the city or anything like that, you reach out to us because, because I wanna see you be successful. Um, and I really appreciate you coming in and bringing your expertise and your passion into our city. So thank you so much for everything you do 
And I just wanted to say that. And then uh, before you, we move on to Joel here. I just want to say as the mayor, it's a requirement that you bring a program like this into my city where I love the people. I get to actually talk to you eventually. So make that happen. Some way we get together, we actually have a chat. Appreciate you. Joel, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, uh, Katie beat me to it. Um, that's that's why I was fighting so hard to get them as much as they can because um, they have done so much for people, not just in Sandy and everywhere else around the county, but for SDK specific from when we went through the fires to uh, people that are suffering from, uh, you know, housing issues due to rent and everything else. And for our youth, um, they, they have fought for our city for years and years. And that's why I've been, that's why I was trying to fight for them to get as much as I can. Um, so I, I wanted everybody to understand why I was, I was motivated and passionate for that because I've seen what they've done. I grew up in the area. I grew up knowing what Ann Farm is and the passions behind it. And so it's, um, it, it's, I'm really excited to see them pull something here into the city and what that, what that can do for our youth um, and for the city itself and the motivation to help the youth. And um, also wanted just to say to Katie, um, I know you're working with the, with the youth council. It might be something you can also work with uh, Noompa and kind of make sure if you can connect there as well. So just to kind of make that connection there. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. How many hours in a day, right? Yep. <laughs> Any more uh, statements to be made? Okay. I want to thank all of you tonight for a great job. Well done. We got through it. And it's just before nine o'clock. So hopefully you can all get some rest and some food, maybe. Um, I appreciate all of you and thank you for tonight. Adjourned. <laughs>